Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a good old favorites video. I haven't done one in a while and I just kind of have been putting things aside. Stuff that every time I use it, I'm like, yes. Like you just, you know when you love something and you're like, I need to sh like shout it from the rooftops. Like that's how I feel right now. I'm just like... Ooh, like every time I use this product, it makes me feel good. It makes me feel beautiful. And that's like the whole point of makeup is to make yourself feel confident to, you know, do your creative side. So I have some skincare, perfume, uh, makeup, brushes, so kind of all over the place. But there's just been some stuff over the past few months that I am just like really feeling and I just keep reaching for it and it makes me feel good. So I'm going to tell you about everything that I'm loving today. If you're new here, I would love for you to subscribe and let's go ahead and begin. So my first favorite is actually Sempered and they are sponsoring this portion of the video. I love Sempered. I've subscribed to them for years years way before I was on YouTube. I used to see other YouTubers using it. I signed up and I love it. I actually still am a subscriber. Even though I work with them, I get a monthly perfume that I pay for myself. So if you're not familiar, Sempered is a monthly subscription service that allows their members to choose from over 600 different brands in skincare, fragrance, and makeup. They used to be just uh, fragrance and that's kind of what they're based around, but they've expanded to have makeup brands like Glam Glow, Glow Recipe, and they have um, like skincare, just a ton of different stuff on their website that you can buy along with your monthly subscription. So your monthly subscription is $15 and you do get a month supply of designer fragrances. So they have big designers like Tom Ford, Prada, Gucci, but they also have niche fragrance brands like Nest, Toka, Glossier. I actually kind of prefer the niche brands. Two of my fragrances this month are from niche brands. So you do get to choose a designer fragrance every month. You get a 30 day supply. It comes in a little tin like this. It's about 120 to 140 sprays. So definitely a good supply to try the perfume, see if you like it. There's tons of reviews on the website and I love that they're not all glowing five star. They're real customer reviews and they also have cologne for men if you wanna get, you know, a gift for your hubby. So with your perfume, it will come in a case like this. You just twist it up and you can spray your perfume, twist it back down where you're not using it. And if you wanna switch perfumes, just go ahead and pull it out. You can see how much you get for a 30 day supply and then just put another one back in and twist it down. This is super convenient because I keep these in my purse and I don't want them spilling or spraying and I like the fact that it's literally like it can't leak or spray which I think is amazing. So the three scents that I chose this month, the first one is my favorite and this is a niche scent. It's from the brand Toka. It's called Toka Simone and I'm looking it up online. It's a fruity floral which I like I like florals that have a little bit of sweetness to them because if it's too floral, sometimes it can give me a headache. It has freesia, lemon, and watermelon. Those are like the top notes. It smells so sweet and yummy. It's one of those that kind of melts into your skin. It really does have that sweet, fruity scent. Not like cheap child though. It kind of just works with your body chemistry, so I highly recommend. It's my favorite out of the three that I tried. My second favorite is also a niche brand. This is from the brand called Nest, and I saw Jessica Braun raving about this, so that's what intrigued me to look it up. It is called Wild Poppy. So again, this is a fruity floral. This is a little bit more fruity, uh, more rose-like than the Toka Simone. So a little bit less sweet, but it's still sweet enough that it kind of melts into your skin. So it has rose, Himalayan jasmine, and pear as the top notes. It just smells like a fruity floral. More floral, but it has enough sweetness again that it's not like biting and it doesn't give me, I don't know, like that harsh floral kind of headache inducing. So I do love this. It melts in once you spray it on. It's a little bit stronger than the Toka Simone that kind of is a little bit more musky. The last scent I got is the most floral of them all, but it's soft enough that it's not giving me a headache. This is from Oscar de la Renta. I don't think I've ever tried any of the fragrances from this brand. This is the new one called Bella Blanca, and this is more of a floral with wet free jasmine sand bock I'm not sure what that is and creamy sandalwood so when I smell this one it smells like a kind of springtime floral with a little bit of a sandalwood undertone I think the sandalwood kind of grounds it again and doesn't make it too sharp for me or too like flowers up your nose so I do like this when it dries down onto the skin it does kind of melt in a little bit and it's not as like woo intense when you first spray it and I know a lot of people love this brand I just haven't tried it personally myself so I will leave a link down below to sign up for Sempered as well as a code to save 30% off your first order from them. I will leave it on the screen as well. It's Babs30. And then we'll also link the perfumes I got. I really, really love them. So I'll have them down there if you want to check them out. So make sure to sign up for Sempered. I highly recommend it. It's just a better way to try different perfumes and not have to spend, you know, $80 and have these huge bottles that you're wasting. So highly recommend. And let's get into what else I've been loving currently. So lately I've really been loving primers and I have three here to talk about and all three do different things. So I can kind of use them together 
leather or it just depends on what I'm looking for that day. My first one is from ColourPop. This is the Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Acid Primer. So you can see here that I have done some work on this. This is so nice and light and it gives you such hydration. It gives you like a nice hydrating glow. Now I don't think it's smoothing if you have texture. I wouldn't, you know, rely on this for your pores or anything like that. But it's super hydrating and buildable. So I can do two or three pumps and it really just soaks into the skin. It doesn't irritate. It has a nice light coconut scent. And as you can see, I've been using it almost every day. So I'll moisturize and then use this and then maybe like a pore smoothing primer in my trouble areas. And I've just been really, really enjoying it. Plus the price is right. Uh, if you don't know, I'm an affiliate with ColourPop. So most of their stuff, I think except for collabs, you can use code BABSBEAUTY and I do get a commission. So I totally appreciate it, but I just really love it been using it a lot and can't stop using it. A product that I recently rediscovered that I am so in love with, I there for a minute wasn't using pore smoothing primers. I was kind of accepting the fact that I just have craters on my face. And then I was like, you know what? Let me try this again. I remember loving it. This is the Tarte Timeless Smoothing Primer. I bought this quite a while ago. I think it's an Ulta. You can get it at Ulta or Tarte. And this is probably my favorite pore smoothing primer just for the pore area, not anywhere else. So I literally just apply it right here and I do feel like it takes the edge off of the texture that I have. Of course, nothing's going to get rid of my pores. I'm a human being, but this really does help. It's a really like whipped silicone feel and I just kind of press it right into my pore area right there. It doesn't disrupt my foundation and I just feel like it looks smoother. So I highly recommend this. This is like an older one that I loved and then I repurchased. I didn't use it for a while and then I was like, oh my gosh, now I feel like I can't do my makeup without it. So I've just been using it pretty much every time I do my makeup. Now another primer that I wasn't expecting to love is from Smashbox. This is the Photo Finish Oil and Shine Primer or Oil and Shine Control. So this I love to use if I want to do a super dewy foundation. I kind of just put it in my T-zone, really more around my chin area where I can get super oily. And this does control shine. It's like a gel-like consistency. It doesn't dry me out. It doesn't break me out. And it does control shine. I would say it's not going to be like suck the life out of you dry, but it just kind of keeps my oil at bay. Now I'm combo, so I wouldn't say that I'm like a super oily skin type. If you're insanely oily, I don't know if this would do everything you need it to do, but for me it works really well and again takes the edge off the oil that I get in my chin area. So I've really been enjoying this too. This is probably my favorite primer from Smashbox. I've used a bunch of them in the past. I haven't used a lot of them recently, but this one I'm highly, highly, highly impressed by. Moving on to foundation, I have a drugstore one that I'm literally probably halfway through and I use it pretty much every day, especially if I'm not filming. So I was using my Fit Cover powder foundation for a while and I do still love that. It's like really good coverage, radiant, but for like recently, I don't know, I've been more into a liquid. I like this because it's medium coverage, it lasts all day, and it's just easy to work with. I can put it on with a sponge, a brush, there's no streaking. It's just not a finicky product. It never, you know, like balls up, gives me texture, breaks apart. So it is the CoverGirl Outlast Active 24 hour foundation. So this is supposed to be like a long wear foundation. It says 24 hour wear, sweat proof, transfer proof, oil free, won't clog pores. I really enjoy this. I'm in the shade Warm Beige. Now, I don't know if the shade's perfect for me. Even though it says warm beige, I feel like it's still a little bit neutral, which is fine. I can bronze up. But I have this on right now mixed with the ABH uh, Luminous Foundation just to give me a little bit more of a luminous look. But this lasts really well. I wouldn't say it's as long as like a double wear. I feel like once you put double wear on, it's like paint on your face and it's not moving. But I get a good 9-10 hours and then maybe a little bit of wearing off around my chin or around my nose. But I really enjoy this. I feel like it's light enough that you could really work out with it. I think maybe that's why it's called the Outlast Active, but it's also, you know, buildable to full coverage if you want to do full glam. And I'm telling you, I'm probably down to here. I use it so much that I'm definitely going to repurchase. So highly recommend this. I picked mine up at Walmart. Next up, I have a couple loose powders that have been really wowing me. The first being the Nikia Joy Velvet Finishing Powder. You guys recommended this to me and I picked it up along with some sponges and I'm really impressed. I used it today to set and I've been playing around with it. It does have like a light, 
you know, kind of yellow tone to it, kind of like a light banana tone to it. It's very finely milled and it's very smoothing. And I think that's why I like it. It also doesn't disrupt the color of your foundation, which I think is important because a lot of times I can only use certain powders like in my T-zone. This one I can use all over and it really keeps the brightness under my eyes, but doesn't lighten up the rest of my face. So I really like this. If you struggle with your pore area or texture and you want a really light, um, finely milled powder that's not going to affect the color of your foundation or concealer, I think you'd really enjoy this. The other powder is actually a high-end brand and I am picking up a deeper shade. This is the By Terry Hyaluronic Hydra Powder Original. So this is a really, really bright, I mean it's straight white, super finely milled, like even more finely milled than the Nikia Joy. This is insanely smoothing. This one I use only under the eyes and on like my T-zone because it is it, it does lighten up your foundation, especially if you're deeper skin tone. I think you'd have kind of that ghostly effect. But I like to use this targeted areas, kind of like right around my pore area to touch up or to set lightly under the eye, the chin to brighten up. It's insanely smoothing, and that's why I like it. So I really, really, really am impressed with this. Again, they did come out with like colored ones, which I think is amazing. I think there's like six shades, and I'm looking into picking up one that I can use all over the face, hopefully, but this is super smoothing. If you have enlarged pores, I highly recommend checking this out. For some reason, I have like a ton of blushes here that I have to tell you about, but I've always loved a good bright blush. So the first one is the Sephora Matte Perfection Blush Duo in Peach Blossom. I've raved about this formula. It's super pigmented. These are insanely beautiful. This one, specifically this shade right here for fall, I mean, it is like a hot red orange, and then you get this light kind of creamsicle peach. So beautiful, you guys, especially if you like to do that kind of sunburnt look around your nose. Highly recommend this shade right here. And then you can kind of swirl them together and get, you know, kind of like a hybrid color. But these are so pigmented, super affordable because it's Sephora collection or Sephora brand. I have all the shades, but I just feel like this is like... I don't know, like sunburn in a pan. Just enough pigment, it's matte, it's not gonna make you shiny or give you texture. Beautiful, highly recommend. My next two blushes are actually from Kylie Cosmetics. I bought them myself and I love both of them and they're so different. The first one I think a lot of people will like for fall and it's the shade Rosy. It is really truly like a red pink, like a deep pink with a red base. And this one is matte. It is so pretty on the cheeks. It really gives you that flush. Like this one gives you a really beautiful flush. So I like that. And then today I'm actually wearing this one, which is really cool toned pink. It's called Winter Kissed. It's almost got that purple undertone. This one is borderline, borderline light for me. So I really have to be careful, but it just gives you that baby doll look. And we all know I love a baby doll look. So I really just am impressed with these. The formula is super nice. They just look beautiful on the skin. They're not as pigmented as like the Sephora ones. The Sephora ones, you can kind of like, whoa, like go too far. The Kylie are buildable, but they're nice and you know beautiful and they give you that flushed look. And I'm quite impressed. So these two shades have been top drawer for me and I've been reaching for them a lot. So I have a holiday face palette that was sent to me by Hourglass. And honestly, I'm really impressed. This is the Ambient Lighting Blush Quad Ghost. So they did release, I think, like a bigger six pan palette, this palette, and then some like eye toppers and lipsticks. This I had my eye on because again, I love blush. So you get four blushes in here. So here's what I can tell you. This one is gorgeous. It's my favorite. It's like a pinky purple mix. Oh my God, it's so pretty. This one down here, it looks like it's gonna be like a soft kind of coral, but it's really intense warm orange. It's beautiful. This is another like burnt one you can put on your like nose or all over the face. This one is like a light kind of, I would say like a mauve neutral. I think a lot of people will really enjoy that. And then people said they really love this one up top. This is my least favorite just because it's so light. I don't really get a like a blush feel for that. Now I will say these have a radiance to them. They have that ambient lighting feel, so they're not matte. That's one thing I noticed. If you do not like kind of a little bit of a shimmer or satin in your blush, you're not gonna enjoy these because they do give you a little bit of radiance. 
but they're super beautiful. You can build them up. I really love these. They just blend beautifully. I love the packaging on this, and I love that they're not massive pans, but you do get enough product to really play with. My two favorite shades are these two because, again, it's like that bright pink or that really warm, like, orangey burnt color. So I love this. I, I was shocked, but you, uh, I used it in a video a couple weeks ago, and I was immediately like, yes, yes, yes. Like, I just wanted to keep putting more on. I think this is really, really pretty. In terms of eyeshadow, your girl is eyeshadowed out. I am just so, like, this is what I'm wearing most days because I'm just kind of, like, overwhelmed with it. But there's one palette that really stood out to me, and this is the pressed uh, powder palette from ColourPop, the Whatever palette. These shades are fall. So pretty. I cannot stop wearing them. And I love this shade up here. It's a super shock formula. This one just tapped over the lid or the brow bone or the inner corner. It gives you such a beautiful like fairy look. And I actually really like this glitter in here. I know a lot of people don't like the glitters, but again, you can tap it on. I've done glitter tears with it. It's so beautiful. The mattes blend beautifully. I just think this is beautiful. The price is great on this, and the look that I did with this on a, on my channel was so stunning. I really loved it, and I just use it a lot. I really, like, again, use this a lot, this shade, this shade for every day. I've done a few looks with this. It's beautiful. It blends beautifully. I know I love the ColourPop formula, but I think this color story is seriously fall in a palette. It's stunning, and I really think you'd like it. Oddly enough, for lips, I've been loving, like, baby pink recently, and I don't know what it is, but I just think it's so beautiful. Even though I know fall time, it's like, no, that doesn't really make sense. Now, Huda Beauty came out with these new colors in her matte lipstick. These are, like, the Power Matte Lipsticks. The two that I really love are very similar. The first one is called Girls Trip. It's, like, a muted pink color. It's really beautiful with, like, a brown lip liner. But my favorite has to be Prom Night. Very similar, but this one is a little bit more pink. I mean, they are really similar if you look at them. This one is just a little bit more pink. They're so pretty, so pigmented. These are so pigmented. I just think she did a killer job with these. They're almost like muted mattes. Something about them. They're like a like a cream to powder is what they feel like and they're just comfortable on the lips very pigmented so I highly recommend these I like these colors a lot and then this has been an OG but I have to mention it I wear this all the time this is Lime Crime Plushy and Rosebud this is almost like a watery kind of sheared out lip stain and I love wearing this like on days when I'm not filming I wear this a ton over my like bright you know lip stain like popsicle lips this is the shade right here it's more pink it's so pretty. It almost just looks like a washed out stain on the lips. I've posted a picture on Instagram wearing this. It does dry down matte, but it's not full pigment to where you get that line or it cracks. So I just think these are beautiful. This formula is great. And this shade, I mean, I just wear it a lot, a lot, a lot. And I just don't ever talk about it on camera. So I thought I would mention it because I really love it. So I have a setting spray that I love from the second I've used it on camera. And I don't think I, I maybe I updated it, but I really want to tell you how much I love it. And it's so cheap. It's like $5, maybe less. This is the Catrice HD Active Performance Freezing Spray. Here's the thing. I'm down to, where am I down to? About halfway down. This is super affordable. I got mine from, or no, I think they sent it to me, but you can get it at Ulta. So they say this is a freezing long wear spray. Absolutely not. This is a hydrating spray through and through. This is like a MAC Fix Plus, a Morphe setting spray, uh, ABH Dewey set. So I'm actually going to use it and show you. I'll just use it on my forehead and you can see what it does for the skin. It really melts your powders in and just makes your skin look just like glowing. I haven't used it yet today, so I wanted to demo it and show you what it does. And I'm just going to let that sink in. And I don't know if you can tell, but it just gives you a nice radiance. If you feel like you're looking powdery, dry, cakey, I just love this. It gives you just like a nice... I don't know, a nice glow. It has, like I said, a light fragrance. If you're sensitive to fragrance, it does have, you know, I mean, it's fragranced, but it just feels good. There's no droplets. I really, really enjoy this. I know a lot of people like their dewy spray. It's like a purple. Um, I like this better. So I just don't know why they're marketing it as a long wear fixing, you know, because it's not. It's not like an Urban Decay All Nighter. This is like a Fix Plus, but really, really much more affordable. And I just think it gives such a beautiful kind of glow to the skin. So I have a face cleanser that was sent to me and I've fallen in love with it. I'm going to try to hold out. Hopefully it'll last me until the Sephora VIB sale. But this is from Fresh. This is the Soy Face Cleanser. 
I don't know what I was thinking, but when I think of like a soy face cleanser, I'm thinking of like a milky cleanser or a clay texture. This is actually a gel. And I love this. It's lightly fragrance, but really it has helped me get rid of some texture I had down here on my jawline. It didn't get rid of it completely, but I get these little like white heads that they just look like little bumps of texture. And sometimes it gets really congested down here and I have to like extract them. This has kind of helped keep those at bay. I mean, there's times when I have like clusters of them. This has kept it down to a minimum. My face feels clean afterwards, but it's not tight. It doesn't feel dry. I really enjoy this. And I, after I like fell in love with it, I went on Sephora to look at it and the reviews are like crazy good. And I'm like, wow, why did I never try this before? So I really, really highly recommend this. It just gets rid of all of the dirt and you know crap on your skin, but it doesn't strip your skin. Just feels really nice. I love it. Doesn't irritate, doesn't leave a film. And I'm just gonna repurchase it because it's just one of those things that once I've tried it, now I can't be without it. So another cleansing product I've talked about on my Instagram, but I bought this myself and I have just fallen in love. These are the face halos. I think I got two or three packs. I think they come in packs of three. I think I got three packs. I love these. Now I think Chloe Morello is like part owner of this. This has replaced cotton rounds for me. I was tired of buying them. They're wasteful. I just was like, why am I using cotton rounds, you know, in my cellar water every night? Honestly, I'm going to be 100% honest. I thought that I was too lazy for this because I was like, oh, it's something else to wash. Like, I hate washing my brushes. This is going to be more pain in my ass, but it's so easy to wash. You can use like Dr. Brommer's soap or like a cheap face wash and wash it right then and then hang it to dry and then every couple times throw it in the washer to get like a deep clean. But I love these. They're so nice. They take off your makeup. You can use just water. You can use micellar water. Sometimes I really like wash my face off with a um, kind of like an oil balm, not an oil, oil, a balm, like a cleansing balm. And then I'll use this wet to really get everything off my skin. I just highly recommend these. It's just so much better for the environment and I know, you know, nobody's perfect There's a ton of waste in the job that I do But I can, you know, make little differences here and there and me not buying cotton rounds that just go into the trash This is worth it for me. It's not hard to clean. I just love it So I think this is a genius genius thing and I know they have like dupes on Amazon I can't speak to the quality of those because I haven't tried them, but this has replaced cotton rounds for me and mostly uh, baby wipes and stuff like that. I just use them to wipe off swatches, but I use this and cleansers to wash off my makeup and I just, I've fallen in love with it. One last makeup product that I forgot to mention that I've been loving is the Freck Pen. So this is tiny. I think they've since made a bigger one. When I got it, I was actually shocked at, at oh my God. <laughs> See how tiny it is? You can like lose it. Like it literally could just poof into thin air, you know, but it's so little. I actually laughed when I got it. I was like, is this a joke? But honestly, when I first tried it, it kind of smeared on my skin. And I think it's because I was going in with too much pressure. And I was like, I don't know if I like this. This is more for like really kind of prominent freckles. You can make them softer if you put them, you know, like put the little dots on with a light hand and then use your finger to kind of blend it in and it creates more. I like this for beauty marks. Like I have, uh, I have moles on my face, so I like to really like prominently fill those in. I have a breakout right here, so I'm like, let me just fill that in. I have a breakout right here. I've been liking freckles and just kind of placed all over, not like a ton, just little like beauty marks all over. And this is what I've been using. So I have the Lime Crime pen. That's more for all over softer freckles. This is more for like beauty marks or again, you'd have to like manipulate it to make them smaller, but I've been using it and pretty much every day. You just have to be careful because this tiny little fucker will be gone in a second. I thought I lost it earlier and I was digging through my drawers and I found it. So I mean, it's convenient to throw in your bag, but also it could literally just hop out and you'd be like, where the hell did it go? Lastly, I have two brushes I wanted to mention. The first is the Japanesque 713 Concealer Brush. This is such a nice brush. I had one of these a while ago, but it was in a shorter style. It came in a kit, I think, PR, and I had so many people asking me, so I went on the hunt, and I actually found it on Amazon, so I purchased two. They're $15 each, so it's not super cheap, but it's not crazy. So I can use this for highlight, I can use it to do setting powder, I can use it to blend my concealer, which is what I typically do. It's just so convenient when you're lazy like me <laughs> most days and you're like, I don't wanna wet my, my beauty blender. That's literally my mindset. And if I'm alone, please let me know. But how many times have you sat down and you're like, damn it, literally it's gonna take everything in me to go wet my beauty blender. So I just wanna you know go through my drawer for a brush. This is the perfect, 
consistency to blend out your concealer. It's not too small, it's not too big, and it really just blends everything out really nice and easy, kind of stippling motions, and then you can set it. I just love this. I have, I think I purchased, I said two, so I have two now, and then I have the little mini one that I got in PR a while ago, but I really love it, and it's one of those that, it's so special. It's almost like the Real Techniques setting brush that's really special that you have to have multiples because whenever it's dirty, you're like, I have, let me see. Here's my other one. See, they're both dirty. I just like use it all the time. So it's like, I need multiples because one is not enough. And then lastly is a brush from Juno & Co. So I recently worked with them and they sent me a bunch of products. I don't know if I used this brush in the video because I didn't really know how to use it, but now I've fallen in love with this damn brush. It's $10. And they call it the oval like blender. I need to look this up because I'm like, wait a minute, what is this called? This is the oval detail blender brush. Okay, so I at first was like, what would I use this for? You know, maybe to like stip stipple on a contour, maybe just to lightly contour, maybe to contour the sides of my nose. You know what I use this for? I actually use this to powder. So I'll take a little bit of powder. I'm gonna take the Nakia Joy just on the brush. And I use this on the sides of my nose to kind of like snatch my nose in and to touch up my pore area. I'm telling you, I love it. Like I, I found myself like the past couple weeks, it's just like top drawer and I just keep wanting to use it. Kind of like those Japanese ones. I just feel like it's the perfect kind of like touch up when I feel like I've blended too far, even just down here. It's just like a nice brush to kind of set or retouch. So I've been using it a lot and I just think it's really nice. It's 10 bucks. I really like these brushes. Actually, there was quite a few, a lot of detailing brushes that I really enjoyed, but I think the price is right too, 10 bucks. I mean, I think that's a fair price for this and it just feels nice and it fits right on the sides of your nose if you feel like you've kind of blown your nose contour out too much. So I've really been enjoying it and I just wanted to tell you that I like it. So those are my favorites as of right now. Of course, there's more I probably forgot, but let me know what have you been loving lately. Again, I'm just kind of out of the eyeshadow game. I'm loving different products like skincare, brushes, stuff like that. So let me know what you've been loving down below. Don't forget to check out Scentbird and I will have the code down there as well. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.